So actually, before I move on, um, one interesting thing about the marches that they do is that, um, again, starting in around 2004, 2005, um, Matsumoto Hajime, the guy who started that first store, uh, ran for municipal office in Tokyo. They have you know, different wards that have different um, officials elected to administrative positions. Um, the reason he did this is because when you're a candidate for office, um, you can hold rallies um, with you know, amplified sound without having to get a permit for it. Um, so they used it as an excuse to have um, sort of outdoor musical performances and kind of chaotic um, dancing in the street. And I'll show some pictures that will give you some sense of what that's like in just a second. Um, There is, um, going back to 2009, um, and this is not explicitly Shiroto Noran, this is another organization um, called um, the Coalition to Prevent the Renaming of Miyashita Park as Nike Park. I think I'm getting that right, and I don't remember the Japanese, unfortunately. But um, Miyashita Park is uh, in Shibuya, which for people who know is like the most crowded part of Tokyo. Um, if anybody's ever seen Lost in Translation, that, there's that Starbucks, and there's a crosswalk below it that's the busiest crosswalk in the world. Every 30 seconds, like 500 people cross this crosswalk. Um, and then sort of off to, off to the right and a little bit further away um, is, is a place called Miyashita Park. It's, been, it's a municipal park um, that severely dilapidated for you know, a decade or two. Um, the Japanese municipal government, like I said, Public space is not really something that's prioritized, I would say, based on what I've seen. Um, and Miyashita Park was a good example. It was just very run down, kind of scary, um, like old playground equipment that was like rusted and looked like something out of a horror movie. Um, but it had been used um, for a long time by uh, homeless people as a place where they stayed. Um, for people in the US, it's maybe a little bit um, different, but um, there, there are not as many anti-camping ordinances, or there, there weren't um, as recently as 10 years ago. There wasn't as strict an anti-camping regime, um, even in Tokyo. So you had, um, like these, this is an activist tent, but um, if you see these kind of structures, um, they're, they're long-term homeless <coughs> residences. Um, and you'll see them everywhere you go in Tokyo. Still today, um, they're around. Um, there's actually a book forgetting the exact title, but I think it's, something, it's blue tarp something, and the blue tarps are kind of a symbol of um, this, this social problem in Japan in the last couple of decades, because you have um, a lot of um, homeless people, or people who became homeless during the economic downturn, who now live full time in these parks. Um, and so when, um, in about 2009, Nike decided that they were gonna pay the ward government of Shibuya something like $1.7 million uh, for the right to rename this public park um, and redesign it um, as a, uh, uh, a sports park, um, put in soccer fields, climbing wall, um, a skate park um, that was then going to be sort of charged per entry. Um, so they were going to take a public space and to a great degree privatize it. And it was going to be called um, Nike Park. Um, so it was going to be renamed for corporate entity. Um, and so um, activists got wind of this, um, and um, they occupied the park alongside the homeless people, and um, uh, the battle lasted a couple of years before um, eventually the government just cracked down, pulled them all out, including the homeless people. Um, and unfortunately, there wasn't really a big victory there. Miyashita Park is now still Miyashita Park. So they stopped the um, renaming from happening, um, but it, it is a uh, climbing wall, a soccer field, a uh, skate park with uh, homeless residents having been kicked out. Um, but it was a noble effort. Is there a charge for entry? Huh? Is there a charge for entry? There's a charge for use of, of most of those facilities. I mean, it's pretty nominal. Like, to get into the skate park, it's like 200 yen, which is like $3, um, but it's, it's so what it is. Um, an element of the marches um, that these guys hold that, again, is um, 
you know, not something that I've seen a lot of in the United States, um, but that might just be out of ignorance. Um, but they have um, sound trucks that lead the marches that um, act as mobile stages for bands, um, DJs, and other musicians um, during the marches. So um, this is uh, a, a rapper, actually, um, and his DJ behind him. Um, this is this is actually a punk band from Koenji um, on the back of a sound truck that's going through um, Shibuya. Um, so again, a pretty like conservative, and as you can see from the ads, like a very commercialized uh, part of town. The the central areas of Tokyo are really highly commercialized. Um, the only real noise you hear is advertisements that just like blast out. So you see these like video screens. This is actually a video screen right here. Um, and they actually are like playing commercials or like music videos out into public space constantly. Um, and so, you know, you have these, these marches come through and totally change the, the character of these spaces. Um, this is Matsumoto Hajime. This is uh, the, the guy who started the original Shiroten Oran recycle shop. Um, and this is at the sort of climax of one of the, um, I, can't, I think this might have been a May Day march, I'm not sure. I took most of these pictures, but I didn't necessarily keep great notes. So, um, But they have this like, you know, drum sets and tubas and all kinds of stuff going on. Um, and it's pretty raucous. Um, but the, uh, the sort of upshot of, oh, and this is, a, this is just kind of one shot, and I might have another sort of trying to give a sense of like what the public reaction is to these marches, because they're going through really crowded areas. As you can tell, like, that's the march right over there off screen. These are sort of supporters, bystanders, participants, and these are like completely non-involved people, as you might have guessed, um, who are either like studiously ignoring what's going on, which is a pretty frequent response, um, or sort of like stunned. Um, because this is not something that people, um, like the idea of a march that's not a right-wing militarist march um, is, is still sort of um, out of the norm, although it's, thanks to these guys, becoming a little bit more so. 